uh, look at pruning, I, th I find out that we don't prune hard enough. Now, there is a possibility to over prune, but, but most of the time we're reluctant to take off what we should take off. When I uh, approach a tree to make pruning cuts, the first thing I like to cut are going to be dead, broken, and diseased limbs. Now, pruning is the best place in the world to start an argument. No two people will prune exactly the same. But not too many people are going to argue about whether a dead or broken limb should be cut off the tree. And if you get rid of that first, then maybe the person you're pruning will be tired and they'll go to the house. Or else <laughs> it'll be easier to see what else needs to be pruned out. And the next thing I try to do, and I like to make big cuts before I make small cuts. Uh, so after I've looked for the dead, broken, diseased limbs, then I'll try to look at crowding limbs. So I've got limbs coming out where they're either crossing another limb fairly close together or one right over another limb within 24 inches or so. I try to get rid of one of those because uh, those that cross, the upper limb is probably going to lay on that lower one over time. And where they rub together, you're going to get cankers and you end up losing both of them. Where you've got one limb above the other, the top limb shades out the bottom limb, and you won't get any fruit off the bottom limb. Get rid of one of them and you'll have better quality fruit on the remaining limb. After I've done that, then I might start look at, looking at smaller cuts to make. One of the things we prune out of trees is what we call water sprouts. Water sprouts are shoots that grow straight off the top of the limb and grow straight up in the air. And they tend to be quite vigorous. Now this shoot is two or three years old, and they will eventually side branch and they will eventually fruit. But when they do, they're high. They're hard to take care of. So my uh, thoughts are water sprouts should come off, and then the weaker, smaller wood, that, especially that that grows off to the side, is what I want to leave because that's where the best fruit will come. If this shoot has apples and it's got fruit buds on it, it's going to pull down with the weight of the fruit, and it's going to let more light into it. The next thing I do is prune off what we call hangers, or shoots on the bottom side of a limb, because those are going to be shaded and they're not going to have good quality fruit. So I like to get rid of that. Uh, anything that grows down, I also I'd like to get rid of too, because generally as a shoot goes below the horizontal, it loses its ability to fruit as much as it did. And uh, so I prune off what we call the hangers and the water sprouts. After I've done that, then I'll look around <coughs> to see if there are some uh, side shoots that need to be thinned out a little bit uh, so, so that you get good sunlight. But if you think about it and get rid of the vigorous upright growth like that and the shoots that are on the bottom side of a limb, and keep those that come out more to the outside and they're weaker because the more vigorous a shoot is, the longer it takes it to start to fruit and the less fruit it'll have on it. The weaker it is, the quicker it starts to fruit. So you need to find a balance where you can get a shoot that'll grow enough to get decent size and yet fruit enough to have a lot of fruit. And, and so the shoot that grows to the upward and outward will do that. Whereas one that grows straight up off the top of the tree is going to be too vigorous and, and it's not going to fruit for a while. One on the bottom is going to be too weak and it's going to have poor quality. And so as I've pruned around here, I've tried to get rid of some of those things. We've got more. You can see this was a water spout at one time, as was this. We're going to take that off. We'll take that off. We're going to take this one off up here. I want to try to open this tree up to bring it down a little bit and to open it up to sunlight. Now, if you've got a tree that hasn't been pruned for a long time and it's really dense, you don't want to go in and, and make a lot of big cuts all in one year because you'll end up with sun scald on the limbs that you leave. In other words, if, uh, if there was a lot of growth above this tree and we went in and just took the top out of it, uh, all in one year, we'd put a lot higher sunlight intensity on the tops of these limbs. And we'll find sun scald coming, especially on the flat areas, that'll kill out the upper part of that limb. If we take out a few big cuts a year and do it over a period of years, we gradually acclimate this wood to higher sunlight levels, and sun scald is not as much of a problem. And so if you've got a tree that, that needs a lot of corrective pruning, 
you need to stretch out some of the major cuts over a period of years. I might make two or three big cuts this year and then walk away from the tree and not do anything. Come back next year and try to make another two or three cuts. And then maybe the third year you could do the detail pruning. But don't try to do it all in one year uh, because the tree may, may get sun scald and it may, uh, well, in addition to that, it's going to water sprout like crazy. And, and what I would like to do on a tree is to have as much fruit as close to a full crop on this tree as I could because that's going to take away some of the vigor that otherwise would have the water sprout up on the tree. So we try to take care of all of that or take that on the count as we grow. Uh, and and it's, uh, it's something that, well, most of the time, uh, if you just follow those basic cuts that we've already talked about, you're going to have a lot better tree than what you started out with. And, and we can argue until the cows come home about some of the small cuts or the detailed cuts. And the problem is, and, and many of that, is there's not necessarily a right answer or a wrong answer. It's going to be a little bit the way you want to do it. The major cuts that we've already talked about, though, there's not much of a uh, room for discussion on those. Those are pretty hard fast rules. What should you do with the prunings? Ideally, the prunings, if, you, if you've got fire blight or other diseases, these prunings should be removed from the orchard, and we used to burn them, because that's really the best way to destroy the disease. Uh, if you can, that's still the best thing. If you can't, get them well away from the orchard, because if you stockpile the prunings right next to the orchard, you've created a reservoir of insects and diseases that are going to move right back into your orchard. And we'll see that. Uh, every year I'll see it, where there's a brush pile next to the edge of the orchard, and the trees closest to that brush pile will always have more insects and diseases than the trees that are further away. So get it away from the tree if you can. Now, one of the things we're doing in a lot of our commercial orchards is chopping the brush in the orchard. And if we can chop it fine like we do with a flail mower and get it in on contact with the ground, it's not a problem. But ideally, we'd like to get it out of the orchard, burn it if possible. If not, at least move it away. Not, I'd rather not use it as a mulch if you had, say, fire bite. No, I'd be concerned. Yeah. Now, if, if it's fairly clean, then yeah, yeah, you could. 